Welcome to this video lecture for the text Understanding Project Management, a Practical Guide, Second Edition. And this is Chapter 8, Quality Planning. So let's get started on this topic. As usual, we're going to look at our project life cycle and we remain in the planning phase. And for this video, we are looking at the quality planning process. Now, as a reminder, this planning is done in combination with the other planning. It is not done entirely in isolation. So as you're looking at scope, as you're looking at budget, schedule, team, and the others, you'll also be thinking of building your quality plans as well. They are linked to the others if they're not done in isolation. So just a reminder on that. Now, there are many definitions of quality. That, that exist. Many organizations have definitions, different definitions, and we all have a personal understanding of quality. If somebody uh, speaks to us and, and says, that's a quality car, or this is a, a quality restaurant or garment, we, we have an understanding what that is. The problem is we may all have different measures, different ideas in our minds as to what those are. Um, it's, a, it's sort of a, a personal assessment. And the challenge with, um, with projects is that we have a common understanding for a given project or organization. So this course and text is going to use the following definition. To be fit for purpose, every good and service must have the right features to satisfy the customer needs and must be delivered with few failures. And I'm just gonna break that definition down for a moment and just comment on why it's being used. One is, is that it's customer centric. Notice that the, the idea that there needs to be what the customer needs, the right features. Any definition of quality that does not include the customer perspective um, is problematic in that well, we could produce something in the project which, is, which, which works quite well, but if a customer does not want it, then it's not quality. Right, and that's that's one of the key features here. And the other is that must be delivered with few failures. So it, there's an there's an idea of reliability that needs to be defined as to what what does few failures mean? What is an acceptable level of of failure? And that's something that needs to be defined within each project. So key idea, which is this definition that I just mentioned. Another quality uh, pioneer, W. Edwards Deming, emphasized the importance of the improvement of processes rather than an over-reliance on quality inspection. So while we do need to inspect, while we do need to, to verify that our, our product or service or result is delivered with few failures, is that Deming was his, his um, one of his ideas was that we should improve processes, is ensure that we, that whatever we do is done reliably, rather than just relying on checking what's coming out at the end. And that, that's one of the key ideas of quality. Uh, so quality should be designed into the product rather than relying on inspection. So that's something that we should keep in mind. Continuing on, Quality consists of the following three main categories, quality planning, assurance, and control. So those are, those are three areas of quality um, that, are, that are commonly referred to within, within uh, uh, quality areas and, and, and departments and so on, quality planning, assurance, and control. This chapter, this video, will focus on the first category, quality planning which takes place early in the project during the planning phase. Quality assurance and quality control will be discussed later in the course. In a later video lecture, we will come back to quality assurance and quality control. So that what will come at a, at a later point. Now, one of the key things in quality planning is to define what are the quality standards for the project. That's the question of, of, of quality planning is to say, what are 
the standards. Now, the question we got, well, what, are, what do we mean by standards? Well, quality standards consist of the requirements, specifications, or characteristics used to ensure the output of the project meets the desired level of quality. So it's these requirements, these specifications, characteristics, and these are used to measure the project, to make sure that these are the what we're trying to achieve and those are the standards, uh, which are in effect the desired level of quality. They may be quality standards related to the product service or result of the project. And these are documented in the project scope statement. So all of the all of the, the, the characteristics that we saw in the project scope statement during scope planning, all of those, all of those um, uh, specifications that were there, characteristics, which came out of the requirements uh, from, our, from our stakeholders, uh, those are standards that we need to meet. Whatever we define in the project scope statement are in effect quality standards as well. So you can see the way scope and quality are very much linked. That what for our scope, whatever we define as the, 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 the specifications, those are our standards. So if we say that, you know, if this is a physical product and it needs to be of a, of a, of a certain dimensions, well, those are the standards we need to meet, right? So that's the, those are part of our quality standards. Um, the quality standards of the organization to be followed by the project. So there are things that are outside of the characteristics of the product uh, that we're producing, the product service or result, but they're quality standards of the organization, of our processes, of how we do things. Um, those are not necessary. They won't be in the project scope statement, but those are documented in the quality management plan. So we document those in the in the quality management plan. Okay, continuing on. Now, a key consideration when defining a standard is, well, how will the standard be measured? If we're saying that, for example, that what I used before was that, you know, a certain product that we are producing must be of certain dimensions. Well, how are we going to measure that? You know, how do we, how do we go about that? And it really comes down to uh, a couple of things. Is there are the idea of metrics and tolerances. And the question becomes, how do they improve the measurement of standards? And so that's a key thing. We need to define, well, what is a metric and what is a tolerance? Well, metric is a numerical, numerical value. That's a, that's a metric. So when we are defining a standard and the way we measure it is primarily wherever possible is to define metrics. So if we're saying the dimensions of a product, we can define the metric as to be the number of the, the, the actual number of, of millimeters or, or um, you know, centimeters or inches that something is, that's a metric, the number. Um, and it's surprising how many times when we are defining a standard that we don't define metrics, you know, that we say, for example, something a little less. Now, when we're saying the, the dimensions of a product, that's fairly obvious. You know, you say, well, of course you will, um, you know, say the, 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 the size, the, you know, the, the, the width or the length and so on in, in terms of the number of millimeters or centimeters or inches. Um, but there's other standards that, that may be, you know, we, we, we may be tempted to be more subjective. For example, we may say that one of our standards is the, um, the, the response time when, when there are questions, when there, when there are questions being asked of, of the project team. Uh, we may have a standard to say how long until it's responded to. And that's a standard. We'll say that we will need to respond in a certain amount of time. Now, a standard that, that a standard that is not well defined would say that we would be we would, would would respond quickly or in in a you know in a reasonable amount of time the problem is reasonable and and quickly are 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 subjective 
is that different people have different ideas. And when we apply a metric to it, um, that makes it more measurable. For example, if we say that we will respond within one business day, the metric is one, one day, one business day, you know, or within two hours, you know, that's, that is a metric. And you notice how it becomes much more tall, uh, much more um, measurable. Tolerance is how close do we have to be to that metric? What is, rem remember we said, um, you know, that uh, quality is, is few problems or, or few errors. Um, and so tolerance is how close do we have to be to the, to the standard in order to meet the standard? You know, for example, if our, if our uh, measurement of a particular uh, part or product was, uh, you know, 10 centimeters, how close to 10 centimeters? You know, is it, a, you know, within one millimeter? Is it within one micromillimeter? You know, and so on. How close is the tolerance? And, and that depends on what it is. Uh, if it is, for example, uh, medical equipment or equipment for a, for a satellite, for example, the tolerance would be very low. If it was something where it was um, a fence that was being built or something like that, the tolerance would be for pieces of wood that are being cut would be a little bigger. So tolerances can, can vary, but you can see the way they improve the measurement of standards. Now, there's often a confusion between the goals and objectives of a project and quality standards. Oftentimes, when, when asked to define the quality standards, uh, people new to quality will just repeat the goals and objectives from the project charter. And there's a difference between the two. And here's the way to think about it. The goals and objectives are really the end result um, of what you're trying to achieve. Like that's, the, you know, the end game is the goals and objectives will, will help you define that. The quality standards are how you're going to get there. Right there, they're the um, you know the measurement of the things, the 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 uh, products, the deliverables, the processes. They're defining their characteristics in order to achieve the goals and objectives. So you should focus on those as much as possible. And so, you know, the question: How do goals and objectives differ from quality standards? Well, that's something that that I just talked about there. Okay, let's look at our ongoing case study, creating the quality management plan. And we're gonna see now what our project manager, Sophie does in the area of quality, um, in, the, in the area of quality planning. Now that our project team planning is complete, Sophie turns her attention to the next element of the plan, project quality. She starts by asking herself a simple question, how will quality be achieved for this project? She sets out to list the features that will set the project apart and help ensure that it is a quality project. Given the creation of graphics and videos, there is a fair amount of technology involved. Sophie knows that technology failures tend to reflect on the overall project quality, even if they are minor. So she begins by writing technical standards on a sheet of paper. Next, she considers the amount of written text that will be produced, such as the press release, holographic cards, mural, and updates to the website. Since even a single spelling or grammatical error reduces the perception of quality, she writes writing standards as another subheading on the sheet. Sophie knows that social media will be used significantly during the product launch. This is something that can be of great benefit to the project, but can also be detrimental if mistakes are made. She adds social media standards to the sheet. She also understands how important communication is to the success and quality of the project. She writes communication standards as the last subheading. For each subheading, she starts to list the standards that should be met for the project. In some cases, the standards are defined by the DECO Productions organization, while the others are standards defined for this project. Next, Sophie considers the quality assurance activities for the project. She plans to hold bi-weekly quality audit meetings to review and improve the ongoing processes of the project. 
She also plans to promote an environment of continuous improvement within the project. A comprehensive test plan will also be developed to ensure that all the deliverables meet the project's standards. She decides that inspection will be the primary method of quality control for the project. Each deliverable produced will be verified using the comprehensive test plan. Finally, Sophie considers the quality related roles for the project. As the project manager, she will ensure that all aspects of the quality management plan are completed. Fadijet will be accountable for creating the comprehensive test plan and will be accountable for the quality control activities. Okay, so we saw in that, in that uh, instance, we saw work taking place on a document. Now there's a new planning document that we're seeing now, the quality management plan. So we saw lots of activity and thought going on there. And just to debrief, uh, it contains the quality standards for the project. Now you notice that Sophie was dividing them into categories, in, into groupings, and that can vary by, by project. For example, uh, based on the types of standards that would be developed, that she, she was developing, she had a technical standards area, writing standards, uh, social media standards, and project communication standards. Um, and as was mentioned in the video, video sometimes those are uh, defined by the organization and, and are inherited into the project. And sometimes there are new standards that are unique to the, to the project. So, so not all of the standards defined for the, for the project need to be developed from first principles. Oftentimes organization, there's, there's many standards that are just part of being in an organization, perhaps many of the technical standards and many of the communication standards, all of the standards, there's, there is a base of the organization and then there's, there's perhaps additional um, standards that are unique to that project's uh, um, outputs. There is the quality assurance activities to be performed. And they were mentioned uh, on, the, um, on the video in terms of things that would be done during the project uh, in, in order to ensure that there are quality processes in place to ensure the effective uh, delivery of, of quality output. And, and this goes back to, um, you know, we, we talked about uh, Deming and, you know, focus on the process as opposed to verification of the output. And this is really speaking to that of, of saying, well, what are we doing? What, what are we putting in place in order to ensure an effective output? So that's something that is included the quality control activities to be performed. And so there is um, consideration of that in the quality management plan and the roles that are related to quality for the project is that who's going to be involved. These can be um, uh, project team members may be taking on these roles. Often organizations have quality assurance or quality control departments and so on that may be involved in taking on some of these roles for the project. So that can vary by project and by organization. Uh, you should take a look at the quality management plan that was created for the case study project that's in the textbook in, in chapter eight. So overall key idea, quality plan planning results in the creation of the quality management plan, which describes the quality standards the approach to quality assurance and quality control and the quality related roles for the project. So that's something that should all be considered during quality planning. As usual, some key terminology for, for, this, uh, for this video, new terms that were, that were defined, metric, quality, quality assurance, quality control. Uh, and again, see the key terminology in section, section in chapter eight for a complete list of terms, as well as the definitions. So that wraps up our, our discussion of quality planning for this, for this video lecture.